Hey wood finishers. I want to talk about a process that people have been doing for years and years and years, but uh, ebonizing wood. So I have a piece of red oak here, and the reason I chose this is because the process that a lot of people select for ebonizing requires a chemical reaction to happen between some of the uh, finished materials that we're going to talk about and the tannins in woods like oak. So anyway, I wanted to show you this one as well as another alternative that you can do in any wood. So uh, ebonizing, the term comes from the, the wood ebony and basically means turning a wood black. And so with this, um, we, we need to get the right chemistry involved with this. Uh, a lot of people will use vinegar and leave some oxidized or rusty metal in that solution, let it ferment, and then apply that. And there's this really beautiful reaction once you apply that. You wipe it on, it starts to turn yellow, and then it quickly goes to brown, and then immediately goes to black, depending on the intensity of the, the oxidation in that mixture. So that's good, and that's easy. Um, I would caution everybody to not leave that in contact or direct sunlight through a window. Uh, that does start to exacerbate the chemical reaction and uh, your your container can often uh, explode. So don't ask me how I know that. Anyway, so uh, I have this oak, like I said, not sanded. It just came off the machine. Process is not different from um, if this board had been properly prepared. Uh, I just wanted to show you how to go about it. So instead of vinegar, there's another way to do it a bit more of the industrial side and there's less um, uh, risk or, or chance involved with how much rusty metal is in that vinegar solution and so this kind of gets us closer. So it's a two-part mix. Here I have iron oxide and I label this as the first step. Second one is tannic acid. So what I want to do, and this could be wiped on, this could be brushed, it's really not terribly fussy about how we deliver this. And if I was doing this alone, I would have my mask on, but this is such a small amount, I'm not that worried about breathing this stuff in. All right, so not a big deal here. You can see that it's starting to change the color a bit. Okay, so that is that, that goes away. I wanna let this stuff dry um, so that we can go to the next phase. But while that's drying, I wanted to talk about a one-part solution that will easily do this effect, but it's, uh, I would argue, easier to control and arguably more light fast. So years ago, I ran into an article where somebody used uh, India ink. So drawing ink, India ink, get this at any art supply store. Uh, this is all water-based, and if you think about um, uh, old quill writing, you, you would use some type of that tablet with this material and then um, and then write out your fancy letters. Well there's another phase of what we can do with this and so um, straight out of the bottle this stuff is uh, really condensed and it's a little bit chalky after you apply it so it has to be diluted in my experience for woodworking applications. The ratio of this is going to be up to you. Um, I usually go pretty intense because I want a nice dark black but you could dilute this so much that it becomes much more gray and you can kind of subtly affect color in the same way. It should go without saying that if you are going to use a water-based anything on wood, you will have to do that de-whiskering or wetting the wood as you apply finish to it. Again, brushed on I think is the best way to apply this. It could be wiped, but then you start running into those streaks that um, that rags would otherwise create and introduce, which is not fantastic all the time. All right, so ta-da, black. I'm gonna let this stuff dry, but this is the idea, um, and I also have done this process before we started recording on a piece of poplar. So red oak is what I just did, red oak we started with, but you could break away and do other materials here as well. If these little streaks were objectionable, you didn't care for that, you can always go with another layer of this and um, after it's dried and then do your thing. 
should say that in this process, while this is drying, and we're almost there, uh, I've seen this a lot in work from the late 80s and up to early 2000, where uh, gesso, so it's a white gypsum material, artists use it for preparing canvases before they would paint. You can put white gesso in here, they also sell black gesso, but you can also affect that color and add pink or purple or whatever um, gesso just by mixing uh, pigments or um, dyes to that gesso pro uh, product and then put it into the pores here, sand it smooth. This chemical as well as the vinegar thing that we talked about will not react with that gesso product. So whatever color you have filled the pores with, once you apply this, it will be this really beautiful contrast of black with whatever the, the pores are filled with. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, tannic acid here. Yeah. You can feel some sludge at the bottom of this, which is not terribly surprising, as long as it stays jar not on your finish that's kind of all I care about all right so with this product I can definitely smell that vinegar stuff all right putting this stuff in and then from here you can start to see obviously what's happening this would probably be a bit more intense had I let the first coat cure or dry a little bit more but you get the idea. Okay. It's all that good. All right. So kind of amazing process here, I think. Um, having said that, you'll notice comparison of these two boards though, the intensity of black is dramatically different. This is always going to be somewhat secondary, this process here, be it the vinegar or the iron acetate and uh, what I say, tannic acid. Um, it's always going to be reactive to the amount of tannins in the wood. So I like this process. I don't love it if I need to control the color and get one flat, consistent color. The other thing that I'm, I don't love about this process is that it definitely turns blackish, but it's not a true black like that of the India ink. And with this, I just it's a little bit more purple, it's a lot more transparent here than this one. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, it will get darker once this is dried and you apply your top coats to it. Whatever the top coat is, it's always going to darken this up a bit. But you can see a huge difference of these things and um, this, I've had experience where I was doing a piece that I wanted to ebonize and I was gluing multiple pieces of oak together in order to make up this mass and um, just the contrast of this board to this one it was so disturbing and so I was it put me down the path of trying to track down a better solution and so that brought me over here to India Inc. Um, I, I sure hope that was helpful I think that once you play around with how to affect the color of the wood and the process of it becomes really exciting to play with, I have found. So keep searching, keep trying new things, enjoy the process. Talk to you later.